Okay, you asked for it and I'm going to give it to you. That's right, I'm going to give you more example problems. More example problems with combinations of functional groups and everything else under the sun. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and do another one of these crazy examples that I might throw at you. And this one, I'm not necessarily going to give you two functional groups to choose from. But it is going to be another aldehyde. So, there we go. There's a structural group. I want you to name it. Oh, well, Tracy, this one's going to be kind of easy because this structure really just has one functional group and that one functional group is it. There's no more than that. So this aldehyde group, there we go. I know how to name an aldehyde. I find the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. This is a pentane. Drop the E. Add a L. Pentanal because it's an aldehyde. And then this is carbon one, and this is carbon two, and that's carbon three. So at carbon number three, I have a methyl group, three methyl pentanal. That's pretty easy compared to some of the other examples that we've done. Doesn't it seem that way? I hope it does. I really do hope it does. Okay, well, that's IUPAC. And what if I just play real dirty and I say, give me the common name too. Well, how do you name that one? All right, so one, two, three, four, and five. Five carbons. Well, this is called a valer. A valer what? A valeraldehyde. That's what it's called. I add the whole word aldehyde at the end of the common name. Well, that carbon is part of the aldehyde name. So this is the alpha and this is the beta. So on my beta carbon, I have a methyl group. Beta, methyl, valeraldehyde. Sounds kind of weird. All right, but that's the common name for it. So that's just the way it's going to be, folks. All right, so let's look at another one. Deet, 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 deet. And we go out and down, out, double bond, O, and an H. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a dot here and a dot there and a dot here and a dot there and a dot here and a dot there and a dot here and a dot there, just so you know where all my carbons are. So there you go. So we're going to have to name this crazy thing. How are we going to name it? You tell me. You do it. Put your pause button. Try your stab at this and see what you can get. And then push to play and then double check my answers with yours. Does it make sense? That's what we're after here. All right, so did you push the pause button? Probably not. But we'll at least work through the example together. Not a big deal. I really wish that you did, though. You'll learn this stuff much better if you try it on your own, learn your mistakes, and then fix them before the test date comes around. Don't give me no 20 and 30 on a test, because if you are, that's what you're doing. All right, so IUPAC, he wants to IUPAC. For goodness sakes, everybody wants to IUPAC an organic. Uh, longest carbon chain, on a one and a two and a three and a four. And, er, okay, we got a fork in the road. Doesn't really matter which way we go. It's the same number of carbons either way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to circle this one. And that's the way we'll go, folks. Nothing but up. All right. So six carbons. Six carbons. A hexane. Drop the E and add 08. Eh, wrong. You don't add 08. Because you don't have an ester. See? You listened to me. You wrote it down. You didn't question it. You didn't actively think. And especially if you didn't push the pause button and try this on your own, you might would have caught it at that point. But you didn't. So this is not an 08. This is not an ester. This is an aldehyde. How do you name aldehydes? You drop the E and you add a L. This is a hexanal. That's better. Okay, but that's not it. We're going to have to name this piece here that comes off of that longest carbon chain. How do we do that? Well, this is carbon 1, and that's carbon 2, and this is carbon 3, and that's carbon 4, and this is 5, and this is 6. So on carbon 4, 
we have another two carbon piece. So on carbon number four, I have a ethyl group. 4-ethylhexanyl is going to be the IUPAC name of that molecule. And then we can common name this as well. So hex, you know, we just talked about it, is capro. And the common name for aldehydes use the entire word aldehyde. So caproaldehyde. There we go. That takes care of the most of the structure that we see. Well, in the common nomenclature, this carbon is part of the aldehyde name. So that carbon does not get counted. So this is the alpha, this is the beta, and this is the gamma. So at the gamma position, we still have an ethyl group, right? So 4-ethylhexanyl is IUPAC, and gamma ethyl caproaldehyde is going to be the common name for that structure. Okay? All right, let's do another. What's that, folks? What's that molecule? What's that doing here? That was like two, three lecture modules ago. Well, it's back. All right, so here's a molecule. This molecule can be named a number of different ways. We'll use the rules that we've talked about so far, though. And it looks like I have a benzene. And that benzene is really just some double bonds there. So on that chart, you need to look for alkenes. And the alkenes are toward the bottom because we talked about this kind of stuff back in Chemistry 251. And then the carbonyls, top one and top two, are at the top. And this is an aldehyde. That's a type 2. And this is an aldehyde versus all the other functional groups that we talked about. So it's going to beat it out priority-wise. Don't believe me? Look at the chart. So I need to name this as an aldehyde. That's fine. Carbon number 1, carbon number 2, carbon number 3, carbon number 4. I can't really go into this because that's not part of the longest carbon chain. That's just something that's hanging off. So I really only have four carbons here in the longest carbon chain, and that is it. So in the IUPAC, this is going to be a butane. Drop the E and add a L for butanyl for the aldehyde. Well, on carbon number one and carbon number two and carbon number three and carbon number four, I have a substituent. This benzene ring is directly attached to the chain. Do you remember what we called that back in the day? This was a rehash, a review of benzene and substituted benzenes. We already talked about this. Look at all of these little pieces that I'm weaving together. I'm making you an organic cloth or an organic blanket so you can cuddle up with on a cold, cold Saturday or Sunday night while you study for my exams. So if you take a look at this structure, that benzene ring is directly attached. If it's directly attached, we use the word phenol for that substituent group. And this is on carbon number four. So four phenol butanyl is going to be the name of that structure. Now, what if we had a common name it? Not, not a big deal. Not a problem. Don't freak out on me if I ask you to common name it. The common name for a four-carbon chain is butyr, like it always has been. You add the entire word aldehyde onto that structure, just like we've done with all the rest of them. That is still called a phenol group. There's no difference there. A phenol is a phenol is a phenol. But the difference here, that's carbon one. That takes part of the aldehyde. So this is alpha, this is beta, and this is gamma. Alpha, beta, gamma. So that means that at this particular position, this is a gamma phenyl butyraldehyde. And there you go. That's how we name it, folks. Easy peasy. Give me another. All right, so before we do another one, though, I wanted you to kind of go backward for a minute. It seems like we've not done that in a while. So isobutraldehyde. Name it. Or but 
tyraldehyde. There could be a Y in there as well, but you get the gist. There's nothing different here. Okay, so the aldehyde group is a C double bond OH. There we go. But how many? Four. One, two, three, and four. There you go, right? <laughs> Wrong. This is an isobut. Well, what is that isobut doing? Okay, well, four carbons in total. One, two, three. The fourth carbon has to form the iso unit, just like it always did back in Chemistry 251. There's no difference here, folks. It's the same old story, just told a different way. Imagine going over to your grandpa's house. Same old story, just a different day. So here is the four carbons in total. One, two, three, four. It is the iso unit because I see that little L at the end of a structure. So this is the structure for isobutraldehyde. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is for hexanal. Oh, this is going to be good. Looks like there's two functional groups, right? That chart, do you remember that chart? We just talked about the chart. The chart AL aldehyde, EN, -E -N, double bond. Okay, well, this name is all that I need in order to draw the structure. How do I do it? Well, okay, aldehyde is a C double bond OH. There we go. And hex is six. One and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six. And what does this four mean? Well, the four is going to go to the en, E-N. All right, well, if this is carbon number one, because it has to be carbon number one, because that's where my aldehyde is, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, this is carbon four. So at fourth carbon is where my double bond is going to be located. And folks, there's the structure for four hexanal. Now, why do I have to put the four with the ene and not the four with the al? How do I know that wasn't on the fourth carbon there's an aldehyde? It can't be, folks, because aldehydes require hydrogen at the end. So that means that this carbon has to be at the end. If it's in the middle, that is not an aldehyde, that's a ketone. So that is not proper. Aldehydes always happen at the end of a molecule. If we're going to name them with an AL, that is going to be at the end of the molecule, not in the middle. All right, so next one, gamma, bromo, capro, aldehyde. Draw that structure. Okay, this is easy. I mean, come on now. We thought this was going to be hard in the beginning, but now it's easy breezy. So Capro 5, aldehyde. Okay, C double bond OH. There's the aldehyde. There's one carbon. So here's the second carbon. There's a third carbon. There's a fourth carbon. There's a fifth carbon. So there's the Capro aldehyde part. Gamma. Gamma, I have a bromo. All right, so alpha. Eh -eh. That's my carbon of the aldehyde. My alpha is here, folks. That's always a trickery. Always the trickery part. Alpha, beta, gamma. So at that gamma position, I have a bromo group. And there it is. Okay. What's hard about these, right? I mean, you should make 100 on this test. Easy. All right. Let's look at another one. Two. Ethyl. Cyclo, pentane, carb, aldehyde. Oh, fancy, fancy. Twinkle my toes. So cyclopentane, I know has to be a part of this. So cyclopentane, there we go. There's my five carbon ring. Carbaldehyde was the name that we used when that aldehyde group was coming off of that ring. So there is the cyclopentane carbaldehyde. Now that is also understood to be my first carbon right here because that group is attached to the ring at that spot. So on the second carbon, it doesn't really matter if I go left or right. It's the same thing no matter what I do. I'm just going to go right-handed. There is an ethyl group. So a CH2 and a CH3. Nothing more to it. That's it. Next one. 
four, methyl, five, oxo, hexanyl. Hmm. Well, oxo we saw before. I kind of know what that means now. It's probably in reference to an aldehyde. It looks like I also have an aldehyde as the main name because it ends in AL. I've got a substituent on it. It's a methyl group. So let's kind of figure out what we need to do here. So we'll just start with aldehyde first. I know it's an aldehyde. It ends in AL again, right? So I can start here. That's a C double bond O and an H. Well, it looks like there's six carbons in total because it says hexa. All right, so that's my one carbon. There's my second. There's my third. There's my fourth. There's my fifth. There's my sixth. So I'm kind of working backward here. So there's the hexa now part. It also looks like on the fourth carbon, I have a methyl group. So this is carbon one and carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six, right? So on the fourth carbon, which would be here, I have a methyl group. So that's a CH3. And on the fifth carbon, I've got something here. And that's an oxo unit, a 5-oxo. Wait a minute, what is an oxo unit? Oh, I remember that chart told me there's a difference between oxo and formal. And it said oxo is really just the double bond O, and a formal is actually the carbon with the double bond O and the hydrogen, the whole shebang. So because this is oxo, they're really only referring to the double bond O, so that double bond O is going to be at carbon number five. So in a sense, this has a double bond O at the end, which is the aldehyde piece, and it has a double bond O inside with a carbon that's flanked by two other carbons. In other words, a ketone. So folks, this has a aldehyde functional group and it also has a ketone functional group and that ketone group is happening at number five. All right. Okay. So we've got one more example to do and then we'll move on. And this is benzene one, three, di, carb, aldehyde. Benzene one three di carboaldehyde. Benzene one three di carboaldehyde. I mean, you could kind of do a two step with that, right? Okay, so benzene structure, you know what benzene is. I hope so. If not, you've not been paying attention and you probably need to fail the class. A benzene is a ring with bloop, a circle in the middle because that circle means delocalization. The delocalization moves electrons throughout the ring system. So flippity, floppity, flippity, floppity, double single, double single, double single, all the way around. So there is benzene. Very stable molecule due to the delocalization. On spot number one, ding, ding, there we go. On spot number three, ding, ding. There we go. We have dicarbaldehyde. So C double bond OH and a C double bond OH. Doesn't really matter how you name them. Just connect it to the carbon with the double bond O and you've got it. There you go, folks. There's benzene. 1,3 dicarbaldehyde. Also note that this 1,3 position. Oh, O, M, P, Becky. Look at that benzene ring. Okay, well, this is an O and this is an M. This is actually a meta as well. They could have used either or. So 1,3, because it's IUPAC, that's the preferred method. Meta is more of a common name, and we would name this a different way if it was a common name. But keep that in mind. These are benzene rings. They are di-substituted, and OMP can be used in nomenclature Never forget it because it could come back in some of these example problems. All right. Once more, once we learn something, they assume that we have learned it for good and that we never forget it, even though that's not real life. But that's just the way it is sometimes. All right. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop in this video. I think that we've done enough examples of aldehydes. Notice in all of these examples, it's been aldehyde driven. We have ended things with AL. 
or if there was more than one functional group, the AL beat it out, and we named it as an aldehyde in every single case. So in the upcoming examples, we're going to move on. We're going to go away from aldehyde. We're finally going to get into the ketone part of the lecture, and we're going to learn how to name these ketones the proper way. All right, so that's what we'll talk about next in the next video whenever you're ready.